Hello everybody, this is Jonathan Wagner here from SolidSimes.com and today I want to show you how to lyse your E. coli cells uh, when you're starting to purify a protein. So here I have some E. coli cells that I grew previously and if you don't know um, the best way that I like to store my E. coli is actually in freezer bags and that's because um, one is very convenient and affordable and it fits perfectly in a in a freezer box but also um, now I don't have to thaw all of these cells at once like I would if they were in the same tube all I have to do is open up the bag take out the cracker of cells. So this is just the um, pelleted E. coli. It's like a brown goo that I put in the bag, but now it's hard. Um, and I'm going to break off some and weigh it. See how much I have. It's really cold. That's why I'm wearing gloves, you know, and because it's disgusting. So I have here 7.8 grams of E. coli cells, and I'm going to make a note of that because we'll need to know that later. 7.8 grams, and then I'm going to break them into small enough pieces to go into this 50 mil tube of resuspension buffer. I have. 20 mils of resuspension buffer in there. And that's going to melt these E. coli cells. Okay, so there you have it. Um, 20 mils of resuspension buffer with 7.8 grams of pelleted E. coli cells. Uh, I'm just going to let this thaw and then I'll see you again over at the Sonicator. Okay, so here we are at the Sonicator and you can see that the cell pellet that I thawed before has completely thawed. There's no lumps in solution and it's about the consistency of a milkshake and, and that's important we don't want it to be too thick because um, if there was too many cells it would turn into like a jelly as it's sonicating and then it wouldn't mix and it wouldn't lice completely so about the consistency of a milkshake is good um, and i've got a beaker of wet ice which is going to serve two purposes. It's going to hold the tube with the cells upright while I sonicate uh, and it's also going to keep those cells cool because the sonicator um, adds a lot of heat to the solution and we don't want to denature our protein that we're purifying. So put the 50 ml tube in the ice, uh, take off the cap, and I've got the sonicator out of the um, soundproof compartment that it's usually in because I want to show you um, the tip. This is a Mysonics 3000 sonicator with the micro tip attached and since I have it out I can just lift it up and put it in and then I'm going to lower the micro tip down until I feel the bottom of the tube and lift it up about an inch that way the tip is about an inch off the bottom of the tube. Um, you want it to be near the middle of your sample so that it's not splashing sample at the top and it's also uh, not buzzing against the bottom of the tube. Uh, that way things will, will mix well while you're sonicating. Okay, so I have a program that's going to be on and off about 50% of the time on, 50% off 
for 15 minutes. So that gives the sample a chance to cool, and then it mixes it up and sonicates it, lets it cool again. Um, and it's about seven and a half minutes of active, um, high power, high intensity sonication. Um, and I know that this works pretty well. If you're not certain if your sonicator is breaking the cells, the thing to do is to weigh the cell debris that you pellet in the next step. Make sure that it's less than the weight of cells that you put in at first. So that would indicate that you know the cell debris weighs less because the cells got lysed and that cytoplasmic material um, went off into solution like you want it. All right, so the cell, the cell debris needs to weigh less than the cells you put in. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and see how it goes. Thirty seconds on. And it's gonna switch pretty soon to thirty seconds off. So letting the sample cool a little bit. Um, and then it's gonna switch back on. And it's gonna do that over and over again for 15 minutes. Uh, when it's done, I'm gonna collect the cells and put them through a high speed centrifugation. Okay, so I centrifuged the sonicated cells um, at 18,000 times G for 15 minutes. And this is what I got. You can see I have this tea-colored lysate um, where the protein of interest should be. And then I have this two-toned cell pellet where the cell debris is. Now, if my protein of interest is insoluble, a lot of times there will be a large white um, layer on the inside of this, uh, but I don't have that um, this time. But what I do have is a really large pellet. So it's gonna be interesting to see uh, what the weight of this pellet is. Um, but uh, moving it forward, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to carefully draw off the supernatant and there's always a sludgy layer um, where the supernatant meets the um, pellet and I want to leave that sludgy layer behind I don't want any of those whatever they are binding to my nickel agarose so I'm just getting the tea colored liquid part. And the little bit of sludge that's left behind, I'm going to pour in here so that I can weigh just the solid debris that's left and compare. We'll see how that goes. But thank you for watching and I hope you like this video. Um, if you do, come visit me at solidzymes.com or check out my next video. We're going to be going over his tag purification of this protein. So I hope to see you there. Bye.